<laughs> and to this day now, I want to share a few thoughts. <clears throat> uh, the first uh, scripture on the board would be Proverbs 15, 8. I'm sorry, 4. 15, 4. Proverbs 15, 4. I don't know, since uh, Robin Williams, how many have seen him on TV, you know, and what happened to him? It seems like I could just see not just one man so wounded and dealing with so many people over the years as my mind surveys the body of Christ. I know in the world that many people are lost and separated from God, but I also know that a lot of people, God's children, and being a shepherd, that's my calling, is to minister to the body of Christ and, of course, to help them to become healed, teach them, and teach them to do the work of the minister, which is a big job, and God has blessed me with people to help me do that. <clears throat> but I, uh, over the years, we've tried to get people healed from, from past wounds and hurts. And <clears throat> sometimes people don't know how hurt they really are until the Holy Spirit can put his finger on that particular thing that has wounded you. And it might have been years ago. It might have been a, a marriage, a divorce, things that we've all done that we're ashamed of, and yet it's left a wound in our personalities and our spirits. And look at that, look at that word there, a gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. <clears throat> I, I really believe that as we have more compassion in our hearts for one another, uh, our sister Sunday, I don't know if some of you remember, she gave a testimony about somebody just blessing her out. How many remember that? Remember that? How many of you know that woman blessed her out, had deep wounds and hurts, and she passed it on to our sister when she lashed out at our sister? And our, sister our sister said, I didn't do anything. That's right, you didn't. But all the past hurts, all of the people that spoke evil and spoke bad things to that woman that blessed you out, they didn't have a gentle tongue with a, its healing power. They had a tongue that brought wounds in the person's life. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And, uh, and this is not to bring any of us into condemnation, but to give us a better understanding, perhaps, of our own hurts and our own wounds and how those hurts and those wounds and those sorrows that we have affect our everyday life and our, affect our relationships with one another and with God. Am I making sense? We want to see that. And many times it brings a certain amount of physical healing, I mean physical uh, sickness to us. Uh, Many of the things, as I look past in my life, 81 and a half years of my life, does anybody in here think that my, I, might not have, I might have received a few hurts and wounds? <laughs> and to this day now, or even if we talk to one another, talk and let our tongue be, a tree of healing. Would everybody agree? Hmm? Now, we've all said things that has brought hurt to others, but you know what I've noticed? When you hurt others, you hurt yourself. And that's why we're not to render evil for evil, but good and bless people when they do things bad to us, 
that we might inherit a blessing and not a curse. We know what that's, that's of course, in 1 Peter 3, 8 and 9. But notice it says, but willful contrariness, in it breaks down the spirit. Now, but willful contrariness in it. Now, what is it? The tongue. In the tongue breaks down the spirit. Even though our spirit is healed, I guarantee you every one of us has been hurt in our spirit since we become Christians. And sometimes big time. So I just want you to look at that. A gentle tongue. Now let's put uh, <clears throat> Proverbs 51 up there. So I'm going at our tongue is important. Our tongue can heal. Our tongue can bless. But our tongue can curse. Our tongue can wound. Big time. Well, I'm just going to let it go. Just let it roll. <laughs> Has any people in here ever hurt your children with your tongue that I'm talking about myself all of us have the object is now we want to get wisdom where we don't continue on the same road of hurting and wounding people but we want to travel the road to have a tongue and let it be a tongue of a tree of healing now notice this in Proverbs 51. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. It's so easy to far back, isn't it? How many know what I mean when I say far back? Let's see your hands. <laughs> <laughs> got you before you got me that is our old man's way of handling things and some of us and i'm saying some of us so we're talking about we're talking to people all over the world now and i'm talking out there in tv and i'm saying to them that's listening to this that this does go on the website because some folks ain't never heard this type of teaching before blast them you know they take this thing like do unto others before they get a chance to do unto you. Hmm? And, and uh, when I was young, I sort of had pleasure in doing that. Did anybody ever have pleasure in shooting the other person first? I remember one time, and, and I, I see the analogy here. I was up on this garage, on the roof of this garage, and I was about 12 years old. And I was sneaking around on the top, and I saw my... My friend, I thought he was my friend down there. We was, say, we're going to shoot each other, right? I go, bang, bang, bang. He goes, bang, bang, bang. And I said, I got you first. He said, no, you didn't. I got you first. And he got mad at me. And he wouldn't speak to me. Three days later, I'd come by his house. Hey, Jimmy, come on out. Let's play. He wouldn't come out. So about five uh, days later, his mother made him go out. So you go out there and you be friends with, with, with Bobby. Got mad because I shot him first. <laughs> now I take that over into our spiritual life. We want to look good and always look good and have the other fellow look bad. It's just an, it's the natural part of us. I win, you lose. <laughs> Is that not true? And uh, ha ha. I went to I went the first mile with the uh, Roman soldier, and that's as far as I'm going to go. And Jesus says, "No. Go to the second mile." You went, there was a law that you had to g carry the, the soldiers' uh, bags for the first mile. That was a law. Now, you fulfilled it. Now, love will have you to go to the second mile. 
Are you getting it? See, Jesus comes and breaks those old habits. So let's redo the scene. Bang, bang, bang. Got you. You're dead. Bang, bang, bang. You're dead. Okay. I'm dead. Let's go eat. I'm hungry. But wh where's my wisdom at now? My relationship with my buddy is more important than me being the hero. Anybody listening? All right, just checking. I was ministering to this young boy, or young man, and years ago, so many different people over the years, and he started talking about the up-to-date hurts he got. And as he unfolded the, the up-to-dates, and then he went to the next hurt, the next person, and, and I tell you, he just traveled all the way back. I mean, I'm, I'm there listening, and I know the principal because he's opening up, and he's talking out of his hurts, and had a, you know, a kid out of wedlock, and uh, the marriage, this last marriage is going to the dogs. And, but how many of you know Has he really committed that to the Lord? Is it still eating at him? Is it still eating at him? Now, put yourself in this message tonight. How many things are still eating at you happened 30 or 40 years ago, but the incident you have forgotten but yet it's eating on the inside of you. And you wonder why you have such an attitude towards that person or why you act or react the way you do or the way I do. Anybody listening yet? Okay, I'm stretching you. Because I really think that uh, <clears throat> until we solve those <laughs> hidden Issues that we've never dealt with, we'll never enjoy the peace of God in our life. Now, we, we say, well, I've forgiven. No, let, let me say something. I, I don't want to open up no past wounds, but I've dealt with people, even though they've got a divorce, and they've lived for 30 or 40 years, and as I touch that particular area in their life, they still is eating at them. And it's making them sick. Or somebody did something to you that's just eating away on the inside of you. Because we didn't know how to cast our cares upon the Lord. We didn't know the Bible. Okay? Now, the next scripture I want us to turn to uh, am I making sense? I'm trying to stir your minds that, that is there still something in our, all of our life, in my life, that's still eating at me? You remember the time I shared about I didn't get to promotion? You know what I mean? But I had to deal with that issue, and it ate at me for a while, but I was able to cast it upon Jesus and get to victory. And the freedom that you have that you come into when these things are dealt with according to the Word of God and by the Spirit of God working, those headaches go. Those manifestations of certain physical manifestations leave you. Because when you go to the doctor, they're going to just put your own pills and deaden your senses. And we need that sometimes. And I'm not kicking at it. I don't know where the balance is all the time. I want you to know that. I don't know everything. But we need to remember and we need to understand that, that that's what the devil works on, uses to just crush our lives, okay? I was talking to somebody yesterday, 
talking about their mother. Years ago, when his mother and her brother were teenagers, listen to this. They're in their 70s. He just died, by the way. Her brother just died. They got mad at one another and, ne and never spoke to one another in all those years. Hello? Now, you may be clear, but you got people out there that need help. And my desire is to raise up some people that can discern and help people to deal with these issues according to the Word of God. Turn to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Now, Jesus speaks words. He just don't throw them in the air for nothing. And I've learned that when you read the Word of God, it's very, very important. Let's start with verse 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Now, Jesus is speaking. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. All you who. It's okay. What is it? Tell me. Still can hear you. Oh, the battery? Still on. Okay. Dang. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I want to uh, 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 pray for you. Now, Jesus is speaking to all of us. Oh, we got that. Thank you. Uh, Jesus is speaking. <clears throat> This is a tremendous scripture. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. You know, if you could just get yourself clear on some of these things, but how many of you know life has a way of continuously, now listen to me, continuously Things that upset us, that bother us, that hurts us deeply, that brings fresh sorrow in our souls. Our children are coming up, the different things that happen to them, just it's like just wound after wound. They get to, they grow up, they get married, you figure, hallelujah. And then they get divorced, and that eats away at you. And then they begin to backslide and, and serve the devil instead of God, and that eats away at you. I don't want to mention too many things, but how many understand what I'm talking about? It's a continue, it's a continue bombardment. And as, as I was surveying Hamas, uh, Gaza, everybody know what's happening on the news. In, in Israel... Raise your hand where I know you know. Okay, I can. Right, you know where Gaza is and Israel. You notice that every once in a while that clears up and people sort of get a little healed and instead of the sarines going off and they get panicked, uh, things settle down, they get healed and all those past wounds of, of what happened is, is healing up now and all of a sudden more rockets start coming over and then Israel has to shoot back. And I'm thinking, thinking this in my mind. The Bible talks about the missiles of Satan. In some translations, it talks about the missiles that come over and hit your head, hit your brain, and then all of a sudden that missile hits you, and you start thinking about that, and then that thing just pulls you down because you don't know how to cast that thing down. Thank you. <coughs> and I want, you to, I want you to be alert that there's a constant warfare going on and as i see the missiles going over in israel now they've got this uh armed man armed man is that it dome arm armed uh, armed drone 
that knocks those missiles down. And so the people don't get all bruised up. And this is what we have to see. I'm using that as an analogy that when a missile of the enemy comes, that we don't pick up the offense. If you pick up the offense, boom, you didn't knock it down. You are now wounded. I might say something from the pulpit, or anybody might say something from the pulpit, or somebody might say something from the Sunday school class, and you pick up the offense, and you you go home wounded. How many has ever experienced that? Come on, 100%, sure. We've got to learn not. We've got to learn to shoot them down. Here comes the missile. What are you going to do? Knock it down by faith. I am not going to receive that. Okay? Now, come unto me, all you who have been hit by missiles, <laughs> and you are wounded and heavy laden and overburdened. I don't want to put too much of myself in this message, but I could use the whole hour just on that about <clears throat> some of my grandchildren. I love them all, and I try to teach them. But the missiles just keep coming. <laughs> any of your kids sending any missiles your way? Yeah. And how do you handle that? Well, it's hard. And sometimes we receive the missile for a while, and it was a biggie. And we're wounded for about three weeks or four weeks. And then finally we hear a message like this, and <clears throat> Lord, teach me how to come to you and now notice what Jesus said, and I will cause you to rest. Are you in a rest tonight? Hmm? Willie, when you get a chance, come on down and talk about the rest. Are you, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Now, Sunday I tried to get us to understand horizontally our feelings towards one another and then our feelings vertically towards God. You understand how you love your children? You can, just come on up and I'll quit. You understand how you love your children should help you to understand how you love God. You sense that horizontal feeling and now you know the vertical feeling, how you think. Now, of course, uh, how old are you now? 64. And in your life, you've never had any sorrow or wounds or hurts or missiles? A lot of them. A lot of them. Tell me how, you, how your condition is with all the wounds and hurts right now. But tell me. Tell us about it. That song that we had earlier, Through It All. Yeah. Now, I'm free. I am truly free. I, don't ask me how you know you're free or how you feel when you're free. I know I'm free because I really, really, really realize who God is. I know who he is. I'm going to give you an example. Just the other day, a lot of folks will say this was a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Ain't no such thing. It's either God or it ain't. So I was, my grass is about this high in the back because my lawnmower is messed up. I ordered a new lawnmower and uh, waiting on it to, to come in. So I said, well, I'm going to go out and cut the grass. I know I ain't got no business cutting that grass because I'm pushing a, a push mower. And uh, I know I don't got no business cutting the grass. Anyway, I goes out there. I start the mower up. I go up a couple of times, then I go in the garage and I sit down and rest. I said, I'm going to do this right. So I sit down, I go back out, start it up, go up a couple of times, I go back and sit down. So the third time that I go out to start that lawnmower up, it didn't start. 
I said, well, I'm going to go. It's, it's flooded. I'm going to sit here and wait till it unplugged, yeah. and I'm going to start it up. It still wouldn't start. So I said, wait a minute. Is the Lord trying to tell me something? <laughs> you know, so I said, forget it. I put the lawnmower up. Sh- put it, locked it up in the shed and everything. About 20 minutes later, I got a phone call. Home Depot. So, Mr. Preston, your lawnmower is here. That was God. That was not no coincidence. After what I just went through, I ain't got no business out there cutting the grass. God knows I ain't got no business out there cutting the grass. You know, so he wouldn't let the lawnmower start. And I am free. I know who Jesus is. I was walking around the house today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And this, <laughs> oh boy, I tell you, I feel good. And, and this voice went off in my head. It said like, why are you thanking me? I said, Lord, I ain't got no reason. I'm talking to him just like this. I ain't got no reason why I'm thanking you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. All you've done for me, that song, through it all, I've been through some changes. It's a lot of stuff you folks just don't know. I've been through some stuff. I got a son. You didn't know this. Some of you didn't know this. My son, not the one that you met, but my other son, me and Martha. He's locked away. And he's uh, facing some real serious time. Real serious time. You know, but I'm free. Because as a parent, we did what we could do. We taught him everything that he was supposed to know before he went out there in the world. You know, but we can't watch our children 24-7. He's in God's hand. I gave that to God. I'm not going to pick it back up. I am free. Y'all hear me? I am free. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. Glory. Glory. Wow. And then you and, and you have to maintain that deliverance and maintain that victory. That's why the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Because there's something else coming down the road. I hate to, I'm not prophesying, but from my experience of life, there'll be something. But then how you respond to it, not catch it, how you respond to it determines whether you're going to get bitter or better. Are you listening? That's just the way it is. And you pick up that sorrow. You pick up that grief. Usually when something first hits you, I mean, you, it's, you know, the first blow, mm, you're dead, boop, I mean, you're just rocking. But then after a while, you start talking to God, and God begins to minister to you, and you say, Lord, I'm giving that to you. I'm casting that on you. That burden, I'm giving to you. And now what's going to happen when you give the burden? Now here's how you can tell, just like Willie said, This is how you can tell you've given it to God. Look at the word, and I will cause you to rest. Everybody see that? And if you don't have that rest, you need to go back. I didn't really give it to God. Lord, help me to give this. Because there are things that dig deep in your soul. Now, I'm talking reality here tonight. Is that not true? I mean, there is things that really can shake your cage. But yet, there's deliverance. There's deliverance. And if you don't... Give it to God. That issue, you will carry that weight around. And you'll say, what's wrong with me? And it opens the door to the devil to harass you in your mind and your soul. 
This is why I think it's so hard, and I know we got some people that, uh, and all of us have a degree of perfectionism, and this is not to single you out, I'm here to help you. But if it just ain't right, I'll blow the world up. Anybody love me now? Where's Frank at? Is that right, Frank? Frank? I know Frank. I've, been, I've known him since 1972. Okay. And, 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 and there are areas in all of our life that are like that. And we can't shake it. And it burdens us down every day and there's no joy in our soul. Oh, there's some heavy things. Heavy things. And I'm not going to go into all that, but I want to teach the principle of do you know when you really give it to God? Because if you've really given it to God, you will experience a rest. And he says, I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. How many could tell that Willie's soul was refreshed tonight? Huh? Yeah, refreshed. Refresh. Okay, let's go to the next verse, 29. Now, this is good. The next verse. Take my yoke. That's Jesus' yoke. Okay? See, my, capital M, means my, that's Jesus. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Now, I want to say something. Over the years in dealing with people, and I've dealt with some people that say, well, I want to, I want to do this, and yet I look at their plate. How many of you know what I mean by plate? Everybody, your plate, in other words, you, you've got so much already to do. And I have to watch out for certain people because... They just keep loading their plates, and I know down the line they're gonna, their knees are going to start buckling and things are going to fall apart because they got too much on their plate. They've taken too much on their plate, and their heart wants to do it. And they say, well, Bob, I'd like to do this in the church. And I look at their plate. Now, let's say you've got ten kids. You got a husband. You got outlaws. I mean, uh, uh, in laws. You're working. You're busy in the church. Anybody seen the picture yet? Just how much can you take as a human being and do it in joy and do it by the Spirit of God and not by the human? effort so we want we want to move people along but i have to watch out sometimes that you don't get too much on your plate because as your shepherd now how many parents is the same way the kid wants to play baseball football basketball wants to go here wants to go there anybody can identify with that no you're the parent and they get that pressure from their, their different peers. Well, you ought to play with us. You ought to play with us. And they, you know, and next thing you know, they, they get into that arena of just going and all the time for what? For what? Think about it. For what? Now, how many love me now? Very, just very little bit, huh? Can I say oh, something here goodness. and everybody still love me? Oh, I want her to be able to dance. <laughs> she looks so pretty out there in a little ripple dipple do. I'm not mocking some things. But God, give us wisdom that we don't put so much on our plate and be burdened down by the things that we put on our plate. And God never gave us that yoke. We put that yoke on our own plate, on our own selves, and now we're suffering for it. The kid is suffering. 
You think we ought to quit while we're ahead? <laughs> Look what it says. For I am gentle and meek and humble, lowly in heart. Now, Jesus, that's his, that's his uh, attributes. That's his very character. And you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessing quite for your souls. Sometimes we've been so interested in our spirits, and that's good. The Bible talks about our spirit being strong. If your spirit is strong, you can take a lot. But see, as you get older in life, when you're young, you're just one fireball. And you can tell as you start, <laughs> the flame begins to go down a little bit. Anybody notice the flame going down yet? Huh? Come on, love me tonight. <laughs> I've been one, I have been one torch. Susan and me have been one torch all of our life. And if we had not learned how to do it in the strength of the Lord, we'd have been in heaven a long time ago. Okay? Because I had my burnout. I said, I had my burnout. And I ended up in the hospital with pains in my chest, anxiety, and everything else. And so I had to regroup, learn some things, and try to find my level because it's a long war, saints. It's a long war. And I see some shepherds just beating the sheep down and they just give up. How many people I meet that just, I ain't going back to church. They just wore out. So sometimes people might think I'm just a little on the relaxed side, but I know what I'm doing. Because you can burn yourself out. And, of course, a lot of people bring a lot of stuff on their own. I have nothing to do with it, but they get involved in so much of everything. And, folks, you can only take so much. I get all of these letters in the mail about uh, cancer. How many gets a whole lot of these letters in the, uh, I mean, I mean, I think today I had, I think I had three letters that they wanted us to give to these cancer organizations. And Susan B. has been very generous over the years. And, and so they, I say, Lord, if you want me to give, I'll give. You don't want me to forget, so I'll put it in the trash. Because the next week, the same people, you just gave a million dollars last week, and this next week they send you another one, and you say, this stuff must be coming out on a machine. You can just see the, 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 the machine spitting it out. 1519 Foster Creek Road. 1519 Foster Creek Road. 1519 Foster Creek Road. <laughs> but did, did you know you have to deal with your conscience on that? And you feel bad? And, and they almost threaten you. And they circle. I got one today for $111. They circled it for me. Wasn't that nice? But see, that weighs on you too. And, you, and all of this stuff. Okay, let's move here real quick to the next verse. And notice we're talking about soul, soul, our emotional area. And just look at verse 30. Uh, here, I bet, yeah, there we go. For my yoke, Jesus' yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh. Not harsh. Hard. Not hard, not sharp, or pressing. In that letter, I could discern, you give this 100 let Hey, I get it from the, the chief of police sends me one. Many, did anybody get one? Chief of police? Hey, you could almost like, I'm coming to arrest you if you don't give this $111. I say, you better not. I'll tell you about Jesus. But see, that can strike fear in me. The chief of police is sending me a personal letter. And I, 
you know, it's like, I know the people, I know you need money. We need money. There's things that I'd like to do here at the Shield. I'd like to give out more to the missionaries. Oh, there's so much I'd like to do. But I have learned to walk in the Spirit and take on Jesus' yoke, which is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, not hard, not sharp, not pressing, pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be bored. Now you're in your liberty because you've learned to cast it all on Jesus. All on Jesus. Turn to uh, Proverbs 15, 13. I want somebody else to get ready. I know Rachel's probably got a lot to share tonight. <laughs> That's volunteering, folks. I'm just kidding you, Rachel. You can rest. She doesn't need any more on her plate. <laughs> Proverbs 15, 13. Are we there? 15, uh, 13. Proverbs. Luther says, a glad heart makes a cheerful countenance. Somebody tell me what that means. That means your countenance. When I look at people's countenance, I discern. Are they, do they have a cheerful countenance? Or do they have a sad countenance? What do I see in people's faces? Now, I'm going to love you regardless of what I see. We're all human. There's probably there's times you can see my countenance so low. But I try to keep it shiny bright for you. Hello? I smile. Because I want you to be cheerful. I want you to be cheered up. I want you to be refreshed. Look, a glad heart makes a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. And you can say down the line, you can expect some type of physical breakdown. Not very encouraging, but that's just the way it is. Turn to Proverbs 18.14. There's a lot we can say on that, but 18.14, Proverbs. Proverbs 18.14, there we go. That sound, looks like John 18.14. Proverbs 18.14. That's a good one. <laughs> Frank's learning that machine up there. He's doing a good job, isn't he? At Proverbs 1.14. There we go. Notice this now. The strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. This is why it's so important that we keep our inner man strong by praying in the spirit. Every day you should get into the scriptures. I'm not saying that to put you in uh, under the law. But you will draw. I can tell you one thing. If I miss a whole week, and sometimes it's easy to get busy, and don't get into the Word, uh, my spirit is talking to me. If you don't have no water for two or three days, is something going to talk to you? Your mouth is going to be dry. Your, your senses will talk to you. How many of you know that? Yeah. You haven't had a bath for a week? Somebody else's senses will talk to you. <laughs> okay, the, the strong spirit of a man or woman sustains him in bodily pain or trouble. 
but a weak and broken spirit who can raise up or bear. This is why you are not to take offense at people when they say things you don't like. Husbands and wives, listen to me. There's times when your husband's going to blow it. And there might be uh, maybe one or two times your wives might blow it. Maybe one time. Ain't no need to get mad. Get glad. These are eternal principles. And you can let your natural carnal mind come up against that, which is the word of God, and you will suffer the consequence. There's sometimes Susan, and Susan does this in a very godly way, and I can tell when she wants to talk. Rick, are you there yet? You, you know when Missy wants to talk. Okay. Scott, <clears throat> you know when your bride wants to talk. Okay, she's shaking his head up there. Let her talk. Don't take offense. Same thing Frank knows. Yeah, yeah, he knows. I know. And you know what? I've had people come to me and just share everything. And they leave my office and they say, wow, I feel so much better. Thank you for ministering to me. And what did I do? Just listen. Unfolding. Just get it out. Because, see, if you don't get it out, <clears throat> it's going to bring sickness in your life, destroy your relationship, destroy your kids, destroy people that you love, You've got to get that out and get God in there and let him heal you up. Deal with the issue and have that liberty of freedom. And that's how you have joy in your soul. And you're happy and everything. That's just the way it is. Now getting back to Robin Williams. Everybody's seen that on TV. He struggled with that all of his life. He did not know. I don't know if he knew the Lord or not. He might have, but he did know how to release it to Jesus. He did know how to feed his spirit and get his spirit strong where he don't take offense every time somebody looks cross at him. At him. Have you ever been on the road and you do something that you shouldn't have done and that person, that the other car... blows their horn at you, and if you looked at them, you would see some things you didn't want to see. Have you ever done that? <laughs> Confession is good for the soul, Scott. I was riding with somebody yesterday. This car just sort of out in the, in the intersection there. They didn't mean to. And he comes by, blows the horn. And I thought, you know, give somebody a break sometimes. See? Horrible, horrible. Now, who wants to share something? Anybody back there? Anybody back there? Not everybody one time now, just, you know. How many understood what I've been talking about tonight? This is your pastor just spending some time, and husbands and wives should spend time talking and sharing about some things. At many times I say, honey, is, is everything you know, cool between you and me is, uh, no, everything's fine. And I could tell, I, I could, I could tell just like that. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? I say, okay, now let's, 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 let's have it, you know.
Because how many of you know we always look at things from different perspectives? Her being a woman sees it from this perspective, okay? From being, being a man, I see it from this perspective. I want to stay out of trouble here. Susan might w want to see this DVD. Oh, Lord, restrain me. It's so funny to me. Did I just put myself, let's just say this woman. They mention the no man names now. Sees this nice blouse. Any of y'all women shop? Raise your hand. If you yeah. And you see this, you see this blouse, and ah, this is it. So you get it, okay? It's in this bag. Your husband can't see it. Then she wears this blouse around, but then she decides, but she goes shopping again. And she sees this other one that she thinks she likes better. All right? So her husband doesn't let her drive anymore. <sighs> Honey, I need to stop by Bell's. And I'm thinking, well, we just stopped by there two days ago. What else could she possibly want? I said, sure, darling, we'll go. So she get, has her blouse in the, you know. So it goes to belts, and she comes out with a different one that she likes better. Does anybody do that in here besides somebody I know? <laughs> okay. How many needs prayer after this message? <laughs> Oh my goodness. <sighs> but how many of you know that you got to know how to handle that? You might not like this message, but you got to know how to handle this message. Because how many of you know you got a pastor that cares for you, that loves you? And I don't mind you talking about somebody else's golden calf, but don't talk about mine. But see, God will. Won't let you go. And so I don't have an axe to grind. But I want you to see, I see so many people over the years, and I've had people on my shift commit suicide. And I don't like that. I don't like that. That really eats at me, but yet i got to give that to God. So let's release our sorrows, our hurts. Ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything in my life, Lord, that's going to damage my relationship with my mate or with my, with my brothers and sisters of the Lord? Because we all, some of us like this, some of us like that. How many likes ice cream? Look at all that. Look up there. Look at all the hands up there on the top. How many likes Coke? How many likes uh, Pepsi-Cola? Mountain Dew? Tea? Sweet tea? How many likes beer? <laughs> How many likes moonshine? How many likes castor oil? Some of you can identify with that. I know that. Everybody bow your head, okay? Father, you know our hearts. And Lord, I've tried to bring this word out tonight. And Willie gave an, a testimony of the freedom he has in his spirit and the peace and the quiet. What are we brewing about what is eating us inside? God, may we be able to give it to you and trust you and cast 
all of our cares upon you. You told us in your word for us not to worry about anything, but to pray about everything. And the peace of God, oh, the peace of God, to have the peace of God 24-7 working in our lives. What a blessing that is. And so many people don't have that peace because they don't know how to give it up and just receive that peace from you. Father, there are some heavy things that come into our lives at times. And either we will get bitter or better. The decision is ours. God, help us, Lord. It's too, too late to pray for Robin Williams. He's in eternity. But there are those that are still alive that carry burdens and sorrow and hurts and wounds and issues that never have been resolved. God, have mercy. Let your light shine. May the spirit of wisdom and revelation so shine upon every one of your children throughout the world that we might cast off the burdens that the enemy puts on us and say yes to Jesus, for your yoke is easy and light. And Father, I thank you for that liberty that many of us do have. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.